next video in the uh, upper limb is the axilla, or what you would probably, being a normal person, call your armpit. Uh, one of several pits. Um, we have knee pits and uh, or popliteal space. We have the antecubital space or the, the elbow pit. Uh, this is your armpit. Um, this is a region between your arm, uh, up, the armport region of your upper extremity, and your, your body or your torso. So it's going to be uh, oddly shaped. We can think of it like a a four-sided uh, pyramidal structure that's got that comes up to a kind of a triangular-shaped apex, and then uh, the floor of which is actually let's draw it like this. Let's see if we can do this. We'll do all right. So this is the floor of your axilla. This will be your torso over here, and this will be the the arm laterally. Okay, so this what you're looking at, for instance, for me, we're looking at this armpit. Okay, so this is going to be the anterior surface. And then we'll draw that kind of goes up in the background and then all the way up here. So this gives it kind of a 4D um, shape. I could have drawn that with uh, dashed lines, I guess. So this surface over here, the surface that is outlined in green, this green surface, that's going to be towards your torso, is going to be the torso, uh, meaning ribs, uh, intercostal muscles, and uh, specifically the serratus anterior muscle. Right? So that's going to be on the, the surface of the torso. That's going to be the, the medial boundary. Right? So we'll put green is the medial aspect or boundary of the axillary region. The lateral, which would be this sloping surface out here, right? this lateral surface or lateral boundary is going to be composed of obviously your arm, the humerus would be through here, but you're gonna have a couple of um, specific muscles, short head, uh, biceps brachii, and the uh, coracobrachialis, the coracobrachialis muscle. These are two short muscles that come from the coracoid process and then they head out to the humerus. They're going to sort of form uh, the boundary, the upper boundary of that lateral aspect. And then when you get out here, you're going to actually hit the humerus. Specifically, the anatomic boundary, lateral boundary, is the intertubercular groove of the humerus. Right? That'll be your lateral boundary of your axillary uh, region. This anterior, which is going to be this surface here between this pole and that pole, which I'll kind of shade in blue and cover over if you're still following along with my terrible drawing. This anterior surface or anterior boundaries will be made up of a pec major, pec minor. Now, pec major, pectoralis major, is going to be when you grab, you insert your fingers in your armpit and pinch this uh, chunk of meat that makes up that anterior boundary, that's mainly your pectoralis uh, major. Pec minor is along the anterior surface of the torso, on the ribs and up to the coracoid. You're not necessarily going to feel that. So, I, I don't know. I never think of that as, a, as an anatomic boundary of the um axilla, but it's just easier to mention them together so you can remember. Now, if, uh, in females, you're also going to have uh, overlying breast tissue, subcutaneous breast tissue, where the tail of the mammary gland is going to insert up into this anterior aspect of the axillary region. And then, what other color do we have? All the way in the back, from that dashed line to this outer curving line, which would be that section back there that you're looking through and seeing that back section, the posterior uh, boundaries, this inferior edge down here to the floor of the axilla, um, this would be axillary um, fascia, 
and then skin. And remember there's that suspensory ligament. There's another video we talk about uh, the pectoral region. There's that suspensory ligament of the floor of the axilla that comes down through that clavi pectoral fascia that forms that skin. This would be down here where the skin and hair grow of your armpit. The um, inferior border down here is going to be, right along here, is going to be your teres major muscle. You also have that rear wall of the axilla formed by the uh, latissimus dorsi muscle and uh, the subscapularis muscle on the scapula. So when my maybe my arm is protracted forward, I'm digging around the armpit, I could feel the edge of my scapula edge of my scapula, but specifically the muscle that covers that, the subscapularis. So those three muscles, particularly this one, that'll be important in a little bit when we talk about the contents of the axilla, those three muscles make that rear wall of the uh, axillary region. Uh, floor is the armpit, and then you got those areas that come up, and they're going to come up to kind of a triangular shaped uh, apex. When they come up, the rear of that apex is going to be the superior border of the scapula and then you're going to have first rib the lateral aspect of the first uh, costal element or the first rib and then the anterior part of that is just going to be the clavicle right? you can feel that yourself the superior border of the, the scapula and the clavicle you're not going to be able to get that medial uh, border of the the, the apex of the axilla because that's the lateral edge of the first rib and that's hard to palpate without some uh, discomfort. So this is the region, uh, it's a very important region actually because of uh, it, uh, its functional uh, structures that, that uh, make up this region and uh, the, the uh, contributions of such to the function of the upper limb. Uh, also the contents, the contents of the axilla are important for lots of different reasons. Uh, in my anatomy classes, I talk a lot about um, the human body and its its weaknesses and how to use anatomy in for self defense purposes or uh, in in violent means. And the axilla is what we would call a target rich environment. Lots of things in there. Specifically, you're going to find the axillary artery uh, and its branches lots of branches in there. You're going to have axillary veins and a lot of little tributaries. So there's a lot of vasculature in there. And then there's the, uh, we'll do another uh, separate video on how to draw this and learn it, is the brachial plexus. So in terms of neurovasculature, there is a wealth of structures in there that need to be protected and are, uh, can be exploited uh, for, uh, I don't know, self-defense purposes. That's a V, by the way, for vein. So uh, the, the, the rich vasculature of the axillary region is why we have uh, armpit hair. You typically gonna find hair, top of your head, uh, beards in men, something of an anomaly for this rule, but top of your head, uh, armpits and uh, around your uh, groin and uh, genitals typically have rich vasculature and they're gonna they're gonna dissipate a lot of heat so we're insulated a little more there uh, we have skin uh, we have hair everywhere under skin except the glabrous skin like the lips and nipples and uh, genitalia uh, mucous membranes soles of the feet palm of the hands but other than that we have micro hairs everywhere and they're really thick in the axillary region uh, because of this vasculature so that's um, your armpit. Let's move on to some of the contents in the armpit. The axillary uh, subclavian to axillary artery and its tributaries in there. And we'll do brachial plexus. Probably do a separate video for each. Oh, uh, like, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notifications. All right, next.